We'll bring this meeting of the City Council to order. I welcome all of the citizens, the administration, and the rest of my constituents here with me. With that, Chief Trustee, if, well, I'm sorry, well, I need a clerk of council. Mayor Cook? Yes. Councilman Grimm? I am here. <clears throat> Councilman Vaughn? Here. Councilman Shammy? Councilwoman Wright? Here. Councilman here. Lindsay? Vice Mayor Eggleston? Here. Seven members present. And with that, we'll have the invocation of Chief Trustee. Father Lord, we thank you for the day and all the many blessings and many, many favors and the beautiful weather you've blessed us with. Please be in this meeting that your will and only your will be done. Bless our first responders, our troops, and their families. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <laughs> to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And with that, we need uh, action on the... Uh, Regular meeting on 5-6. Second. Any discussions? Uh, Shammy and Lindsay. Yeah. I'm sorry. You're all right. Hearing no discussion or any alterations or changes? If not? Vice Mayor Eggleston? Yes. Mayor Cook? Yes. Councilman Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Shammy? Yes. Councilwoman Wright? Yes. Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Minutes With that, I second. need a motion for the special so meeting moved. minutes. Lindsay Shammy? <coughs> Good call. With that? Councilwoman Wright? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Vice Mayor Eggleston? Yes. Mayor Cook? Yes. Councilman Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Shammy? Yes. 770. With that, uh, we've got a Board of Zoning Appeals interview with Mr. Michael Green. If you will come up to the podium. Mr. Green, if you'll tell us a little bit about yourself. Sure. Uh, my name is Michael Green. Uh, born, raised, reside in New Carlisle. I grew up off of Quick Road on, on Zeller Drive. I uh, currently live on West Washington Street now with my wife, uh, Lauren. We've been married uh, a little over uh, uh, two years now. I'm sorry, a year now. And uh, went to Tecumseh, graduated from there. Uh, started out going to the University of Akron and then transferred home and graduated from the University of Dayton with a bachelor's in mechanical uh, engineering. Uh, currently work in Beaver Creek at a company called uh, Resident Sciences. Uh, they do some uh, stuff for um, military contractors and uh, things like that. And uh, uh, mom uh, went to, I'm sorry, didn't go to, she worked at Tecumseh for over 30 years. Started out in the board office, then uh, transferred over to high school, finished out there. And then dad uh, was in the military and uh, still flies for Delta to this day. And then the wife, uh, Lauren, she works at Mercy Health in Springfield and is a RN there at the hospital. And I also have a sister as well. Okay. Council, any questions for Mr. Green? Mr. Mayor. Go ahead. You've only been married a little over a year? Yes. <laughs> Only 26, yeah. And you really want to do this? And you're still on your honeymoon? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. God bless you is all I can say. Thank you. Uh, and your wife's good with this? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, now for a serious question. Mm -hmm. uh, your neighbor, you and him have a fight. He comes before you at the BZA for his zoning variance. What do you do? 
I would do whatever's right and by the law. So if, if I'm the wrong, I'm in the wrong. If he's in the wrong, he's in the wrong. It's, I would do it uh, black and white, whatever's right, whatever's wrong, by the book. So you follow your ordinances and listen to his side of the story, whether you liked him or not, and if it made sense to you, you would approve the zoning? Yes. Thank you. Yep. Anyone else? Go ahead, Mr. Blunt. What would you say is your best character quality that you bring to this solution? That I bring to this? Probably my... Maybe my attitude as a whole, uh, like, like I can do attitude, and uh, if, if I don't know how to do it, I'll figure it out or ask someone who can, and they can show me. Uh, uh, with, I guess that attitude also being a willingness to learn um, and to grow. Yep. Go ahead, Ken. Yeah, hi. Um, compassion is really important to me. I was wondering how do you feel you could handle the anger that somebody might have because you didn't pass what they wanted to give them their fence or whatever. Would that be an issue? I don't think so. Um, I would try to be as understanding as I could be of their situation by putting myself in their shoes um, and trying to understand where they're coming from. Um, if it became an issue, maybe taking a, a short break uh, to let people cool down or to reschedule uh, may also help. Uh, if, if tempers arise. Okay. So you hold your temper really well? I would think so, yes. Okay. Do I hear a motion to accept? So moved. Councilwoman Wright? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Vice Mayor Eggleston? Yes. Mayor Cook? Yes. Councilman Grimm? Yes. Councilman Vaughn? Yes. Councilman Chamey? Yes. Welcome aboard, my friend. Thank you. Congratulations, sir. Thank you. Okay. City Manager's Report. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of council, members of the public. We'll start the city manager report with our service report from our assistant city manager, Mr. Kitko. Thank you, Mr. Bridge, mayor, members of council, members of the public. Uh, under Public Works Department, uh, Carlisle Park project was finished, and I noticed there was some signs. Uh, I am also working on adding an additional fence, uh, waiting on a couple uh, <laughs> estimates to come in. Uh, they were supposed to be here today or tomorrow, but we are adding a fence there on this uh, Church Street side just to help with the balls from, uh, you know, possibility of rolling into the street. Uh, the preparing for parks and streetscape improvement, uh, that is kind of uh, a little dated now. We did get the flowers, so you'll start seeing those going up on Main Street. Uh, uh, the uh, parks individual and our new seasonal help that will be helping with the watering those uh, started installing those uh, today they will probably be finished tomorrow of course Memorial Day weekend is a huge weekend for one um, the beautification of our city to um, service members and three the cemetery uh, down there so we have uh, basically all hands on deck for weed eating mowing and uh, doing a lot of Main Street work and flag installs Pickleball court uh, conversion has begun. You'll see four cones on the one court. We did have Corin come in to uh, get our asphalt done. Um, our next step is get the holes emptied out. We will get the pole set in concrete, and then the company will come up and go ahead and, and repaint the whole court surface with a blue and white, uh, just so it'll be a little different than your standard tennis court colors. Heritage Hall and Hensley Park parking lots will be paved this Thursday, May 23rd. Uh, right now, the weather it says weather permitted, but it is looking good that that'll get uh, get done. There will be bollards, uh, parking blocks in, a, in the places that need to be, and striped for ADA uh, parking spaces uh, that are accessible and then meet the criteria. Water department, uh, we did pass our inspection today for the pool. Uh, it is filled up. They have already started filling up the concession stand. We do have some middle school parties for the kids coming up the middle this week and opening day is this Saturday. So go buy your pass. Uh, well number five to be cleaned in the end of May to early June. In your last report it was April. We're about two behind um, 
another project that the company is working on. As with most contractors, everybody is busy this time of season. Uh, we are currently in the engineering phase, probably about middle of the engineering phase for our lead service line project, which is in the old section of town. Um, we are looking to get that contract awarded sometime in October, so then a, for about a year uh, or so, we'll be under construction. Uh, in the sewer department, we're currently working on, still working on our plant expansion study. We are waiting on some additional information to come back from the engineers on some uh, reworkings that the city manager and myself and the superintendent had discussed. 2024 road reconstruction resurfacing projects. Uh, for the 2024 resurfacing, we did get the bids back and they were very favorable for this this year. We are doing West Washington and Villa Drive up to Smith Street and to Washington. Those will be with the associated eight ADA curb ramps uh, with those roads. And we additionally had um, uh, just those eight and eight going up in the Willowick area, but because the prices came in uh, a little more than 50% cheaper than they were last year, which is odd, um, we are doing an additional 16 ADA ramps up in the Willowick area, so we'll actually get 24 done um, this year. And then, uh, so that ordinance is in front of council tonight for acceptance. It is an emergency because they, they've already bid it. Most of the other agencies, we all, they all turn all their agreements in just so it does not hold the contractor up. I think he has um, a little over 120 days to get this complete, and it's countywide. Uh, 2024 Clark County striping contract has also uh, been is done and received bids. We are doing all our major thoroughfares, including the white edge line on 235. I'm not sure the contract or the timing of when that be, but I will update council and the public uh, when that is about to occur. Fenwick Drive reconstruction phase two is complete. And again, as I stated, Carlisle Park, phase one is complete. We did apply for some additional funds for next year through the CDBG funding to do a little bit more work in Carlisle Park. Um, still waiting to hear if that will go in front of the Clark County um, commissioners to be approved with another project or not. NatureWorks grant, uh, tomorrow morning we'll be uh, pouring the concrete for the three new gazebos. A uh, company will be coming down from Dundee approximately a week to two weeks from, uh, the, from tomorrow to install those. And then uh, those will be fully ADA compliant, uh, wheelchair accessible from the original concrete of the pool. Disc golf course, there is attached um, right below my report, kind of the course layout through Brubaker Park. That is, uh, you know, somewhat preliminary slash final. But once I get a contractor in to um, look at doing the clearing, which right now is estimating to be anywhere between twenty-five and thirty thousand to clear out all the course uh, area, um, we're looking at by the time some players play, we make adjustments. You know, we don't pour anything in concrete like the baskets or tipos. Um, we're looking at ribbon cutting probably mid to late spring next year to when it'll be like open and fully accessible to the public for disc golf or people use it as an additional walking trail. And additional items, um, I did apply for a CDBG critical infrastructure grant for Rawson. Uh, I believe we are the only application from Clark County, so it'll just be New Carlisle against some of the other uh, Southern Ohio areas that, uh, that we typically compete with every other year. And that is all I have on my report. I can entertain any questions on it or um, any questions on the course? Thank you. I have a few things. Um, I was out riding my bike today on a great day and I saw the crews putting up the hanging baskets. Mm -hmm. I got so many positive comments last year. Mm -hmm. And I thank them for getting it done. Um, pickleball court has begun. Do you know how long that will take? Um, my guess is sometime in the middle of this week because my guys are doing other excavating work to get ready for the asphalt. I would say probably middle of this week we will get digging the holes. Probably within the next three weeks or so we should be getting painting. It'll, it's, it'll be a weather thing for that surface to, be, to get painted. And reprogramming the traffic light of Main and Jefferson. So the signals are on order. Uh, they should be in, in any time. Capital Electric already has a purchase order uh, number in their hands to as soon as they come in, they will get those installed. They're already prepped for that signal. And we'll get the first two um, put in for the southern and the eastern turn. Uh, those, and then we'll start making adjustments on how long do we 
uh, get those to do their their arrow at the same time they're getting the green. So there'll be a little bit of wiggle room. I do. You'll start seeing signs go up that state traffic pattern is changing. So those will be posted for a temporary time while this traffic pattern changes. And I am also looking into, um, or the company that we are using is supposed to be uh, looking at our signals currently for the evening hours because uh, I have sta uh, stood out during the signal operation and they're operating exactly like they're supposed to but I haven't been out there at a specific time at like say five o'clock when um, supposedly either someone's getting a green arrow when they're not when they're not supposed to or they're not getting one when they are so we're just we're double checking that as we speak it's gonna take time to work out those. yep all right thank you Anybody else? Go ahead, Kev. Um, this is kind of a silly question, but you keep calling it Carlisle Park. Um, when I grew up, right down the road from it, it was always Little Park. And then some people called it New Carlisle Park. But I've never heard it called just Carlisle Park. Um, I'm probably just abbreviating. I know it's New Carlisle Park, so it's probably my fault. But it's been New Carlisle Park since I moved here. Yeah, well, you yeah. just keep saying Carlisle, and I didn't want the sign to say Carlisle Park. Oh, yeah. I've only ever heard it as Carlisle Park. Really? Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Yeah. You guys? Okay. Are we getting a new sign for Mile Park? Yeah, we are actually working on all the park signs right now. Okay. Now, Mr. Britt, or uh, Mr. Kirko, under Public Works bullet number two, can you elaborate on that? You skipped it. Are you talking about the dirt patching? Yes, sir. Yeah, we're currently dirt patching um, right now in the middle of these few other projects. Um, but if you got any holes that need filled, um, you know, just give us a call. But yeah, they're act they're actively out. I believe we've already hit five or six which you know a lot of our streets have already been repaved so we haven't had to go out and dirt patch those so we mainly hang in the old section scarf but if you have something is there something that we're missing right now oh i have your number on speed dial <laughs> oh gotcha <laughs> i also have the city manager's number on speed dial mm -hmm. uh, oh he's not done. yeah also under additional items sir what discussions about metro the metro uh, net project say again i'm sorry the metro net project discussion mm -hmm. you skipped it also oh there's, there was really no update with it they're going to be probably in here through they they would like to get out of here by the winter time but um the only part that i i forgot to mention is the northwood section has not been uh, approved in their books so all the other three sections of town are you know, getting done with their drilling and overhead, and then all their, their other people will be coming in with the lines and actually pulling them through the conduit and doing the connections. But they're looking probably close to winter time when they might get out of here. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> one more question, and I'll, I'll relinquish. The uh, well, as soon as I think of it again, I'll ask you. I hate that when that happens. <laughs> um. I just have a question about the well cleaning. Does that affect us in any way? Will our water be dirty or we won't know the difference? You won't know the difference because we take that well offline. Well, we have four wells, so we take one offline and run. We have uh, three others to run during that time. Okay. Go ahead. Yep. We got a big repair to do there. That's more than dura patching. Yeah, we actually are going to excavate that out. Yeah. If I may, follow up question to Mr. Uh, Chammy. Timeline on that. What's that? T the timeline on fixing that over on Scott? We're, I think we actually have some uh, asphalt work to do in water. It's probably going to be next week. For the dig out? Mm hmm. Okay. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? <laughs> All right. Moving right along. All right, thank you, Mr. Kiko. Moving on to city manager report, our fire and, e fire and EMS report with Fire Chief, Chief Krusty. Mayor, Council, and citizens, for the month of April, the New Carolina Fire Division responded to 115 EMS calls in the city. The division responded to seven fire-related calls, five good and 10 calls for service calls, 
and one false alarm. We had nine EMS calls answered by mutual aid by Pike Township and eight, uh, eight mutual aid calls answered by Dr. Clark due to that in 529 response. We answered three mutual aid calls from Pike Township. We answered eight mutual aid calls for Bethel Park. That's EMS calls. Our total run number at the uh, time of the report is 554. We are now at 600. We're averaging over 100 runs a uh, month. Uh, we also still have smoke detectors for the citizens. And we need one. I'll have to just contact me or contact the station. Two or we can use the mountain to install it. Uh, Chief Trustee, is uh, both of our medics back in service? Yes, they are. They were both back in service as of 1600 on Friday. Can you elaborate what was going on with them? The first medic, the board medic, went out due to uh, the phone of flywheel mm. and had to be replaced along with some uh, recall work, transmission work that needed to be done. The Dodge medic is the oldest medic. The rear end of the medic, when we open up the doors where it lowers down to let the patients in, is a very old antiquated system with airbags. And uh, one of those airbags is blue, which drops all the air pressure out of the back end of the medic. The medic is like basically sitting on its, on its uh, axle almost is undrivable at that time. So we had to get that repaired and order those bags, get those bags in. Uh, luckily we were able to get them in in two days, or it was five days. Mm -hmm. And we had to uh, do some, have some welding work done on one where that bag is installed to do the disintegrating with age. Uh, but it is back repaired, the bag is back in service. That makes the 16th bag that we replaced all the medics to do that. Was that medic repaired in house or was it sent out? Uh, some in house, some out house. We had to send it to just automotive for the welding work. <laughs> uh, but the other part was done in itself in house. Okay, thanks, sir. Chief, let me ask a dumb question. With the amount of runs that we're having, which would equate to about 20 per day on a 30 day month, are we getting close to the second emergency or medic crew on duty? There's times and very, very, very often times where we could have put a uh, second medic. We had personnel that set it second medic in the street. Uh, if you look at the report, we had, we had 16 calls that we were unable to answer to our med first route out medic being on the run. Uh, so. Again, it's not a matter of if, it's when. We're so getting, I would assume we're rapidly approaching that number. We're getting and with the point now that we're, we, we're getting hit sometimes with two and three medic runs within an hour. With the addition of the 500 homes coming in, we could be fast approaching that. Anyone else? Thank you, Fire Chief. And moving on with the city manager report, uh, we'll do the planning and zoning and mayor's court report. So for April 29th and May 10th, we had 151 total violations. 73 total properties were violated. There are average of 2.06 uh, average violations per property. There are three abatements complete, 102 closed violations, four under investigation. Uh, three were added to the nuisance property list. Uh, two were submitted to mayor's court and then five extensions. Uh, mayor's court is also, report is also attached. We can see who showed up and has their cases heard to the magistrate and also who paid to the violation bureau. Any questions on the planning and zoning and mayor's court report? No. Okay, and with the finance report. So for the month of April, we have received $725,767.91, and we have expended $679,241. Um, brings our ending balance overall to $7,658. Dollars five hundred seventy-two and fifty cents. Uh, the finance report also uh, includes the bank report, um, our monthly net income tax collection. Um, uh, last year, I started warning council that I'm concerned that we're starting to see our income tax collection starting to level out, and I do believe that's due because we're getting caught up on our past due uh, collections. As we can see, every month we submit this to you, that gap is closing and closing and closing. 
So right now we're at 0.55% up against this time last year. So again, watching this, we watch it every single month to see where we're at compared to last year's collections, but I at least wanted to bring that up to council so they can see that percentage. Uh, the finance report also has a check report and also with the revenue and expenses on that. Any questions on the finance report? Do I have a second? Okay. Mayor Cook? Yes. Councilman Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Shammy? Yes. Councilwoman Wright? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Vice Mayor Eggleston? Yes. Accepted 7 0. Mayor. Go ahead. have a motion and a second for the uh, mayor's court. Any comment? If financial. not? Mayor. So, financial. Oh, Larry did the financial. Well, I did the financial. Oh, You're doing the mayor's. We haven't talked about the mayor's court yet. Mayor, go ahead. Go ahead. All right. Mayor Cook? Yes. By Councilman Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Shammy? Yes. Councilwoman Wright? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Vice Mayor Eggleston? Yes. 770. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah, moving on with the city manager report. Got a few bullet items to get through. Just bear with me here. Uh, Heritage, High, Heritage Hall plaque edition. Uh, there's an asterisk there that says potential. Uh, Dave McWhorter gave me a call late last week and wanted to know uh, idea of places to maybe put a plaque, a bronze plaque, I do believe, of General Funston in town somewhere. I guess he's going to be filling out some application in order to get that funded. He was picking my brain about places to put it in the city. Well, Heritage Hall, I think, would be a fantastic place to put that because I know that when council changed the name, part of that was the focus on the Heritage. And I do believe General Funston was one of those. So I wanted to gauge council's opinion on what you guys thought of basically, if he gets it, putting that plaque outside of Heritage Hall with a little expl explanation of who General Funston was and how he impacted our community. Go for it. Go for it. Yeah. Sounds like a plan. That's all I need. need a motion for that? I, I think I got it. Okay. Got to get general consensus, yeah. Okay. Yeah, we're good. Um, so that's great. Thank you for that. I was kind of expecting that kind of response. So I, I think it's going to complement Heritage Hall very, very well. Uh, MetroNet door-to-door sales. So this is really for the citizens and council members. We have had a lot of solicitor peddlers rent come into the city for MetroNet to go door-to-door. -door. Um, I do believe that they'll be here through maybe Wednesday of this week, but don't quote me on that. They may amend that to go to uh, end of next week. Uh, they are required to have their badge on there uh, as well as a copy of that permit. Uh, MetroNet generally generally does do good job when they go door to door is being very respectful of people's privacy so if you have any concerns or questions with them just give us a call at the city building and we will address those properly has council had any complaints since i sent the email out last week regarding those i've great. had none great and i know they're aggressively in town going so they must be doing everything correctly so thank you now this is a cool program so clark county multi -jer uh, -jer i'm sorry I'm take these glasses off i can't see with them Clark County Lead Safe Program, Ohio. That is a free program. It's, to, it's called Lead Abatement. It's Lead Safe Removal on Home. So the county is a county sponsored program. So to qualify, you ha your house has to be uh, prior to 1978. And also there's a 50K max for each project. But let's just say you have uh, windows or doors or siding or anything like that that has lead in it, paint, interior, exterior, doors. You can actually apply to the, be into this program to get that abated at no cost to you, no obligation. Again, there's a 50K max on each one. Um, so included in this package is the pre-program information and pre-application. We're gonna go ahead and put that on our city website as well. So if any resident would like to take advantage of that, please go ahead and look into that information. We usually have good success when we uh, market programs from the county. I know a lot of us had did some home improvements last year and some of the years before that was some funding from the county as well. So if you have any questions on that, just give us a call and we'll definitely guide you in the right direction. Clark County Multi-Jurisdictional Hazard Mitigation Plan. So we had a special meeting, uh, I do believe last Monday, we had Michelle Pitstick from Clark County EMA come and visit us and council's interested in developing a, a basically emergency disaster plan. So I'm gonna be working on that for council. 
Uh, but in that, she had talked about that county uh, mitigation hazard program that they are doing. Uh, me and some key administrators will be at that meeting on the 22nd. I'm going to have more information for council probably after I go to that meeting, but I at least wanted to uh, let council be exposed to the documents that I'm going to fill out on that behalf. So basically, we're going to have to be tasked with the, as a community to find out what kind of potential um, natural disaster hazards we want to mitigate, whether that be flooding, whether it be tornado damage. So again, we'll probably have a, a session with council to get your guys' opinion on that. But it's something that council uh, seemed to be actively engaged in doing when she had mentioned that maybe we should participate in that plan. So we're going to go dive right in and start participating and hopefully have a great document for the city of New Carlisle as well. City Council Strategy Session in Retreat. That is our council retreat coming up. I do believe it's June 22nd at the fire station. I did speak with Pete Bales. Um, he just asked her for a reminder for council to submit all surveys prior to June 1st. He said he's got about half of them back by now. But again, just a friendly reminder, June 1st is that deadline. Policy items council's working on. So council, we've done a good job at getting some policies enacted. So the first one is the boards and committee handbook. We emailed that final, uh, not final draft, but the working draft out to council. It's been updated with the table of contents and the appendices. Um, council still need to determine what exact boards and committees you want to be active, but we are seeking guidance on the next steps. We're also seeking guidance on the next steps with the charter review. Uh, at that last meeting too, we had decided to do the preamble through article four, which is the first five sections. So what I'd emailed to council with the packet had the um, changes that they want to do. I combined it into one document and also gave a supplement document, just kind of explain it in a different way. But again, we're so close to that. I do know we're under the gun with the getting things in order to get the ballot. So I would like for possibly council to discuss that and maybe have a special meeting relatively soon um, so we can get that project going. We can also discuss the discovery handbook that I'm gonna be finishing. That's gonna be a very small version. We're gonna focus heavy on the email on that. I think as we discovered from uh, the meeting that we had, with Michelle Pickstick that really that's our best resource to go. Really have Fire Chief anchor in that plan and then really utilizing the resources at the EMA. So we're at least gonna get something in a document the council can vote on so it can be a working policy. But again, we got three or four different things here that we need to get working on, guidance on that. The last one being that Citizen of the Year plaque. Um, we had developed that probably a year and a half, two years ago. We haven't done anything with it since. So I think it'd be good if council discussed that and maybe um, task the administration with maybe looking at some some program you guys can mirror. Um, now that we have the staff to do that, we'd be glad to help you out with that. But it's something that would be definitely beneficial for our citizens. An upcoming uh, legislation, I'm sorry, I skipped one, on 6 we are gonna do that presentation of council, I mean of the city programs we're going to uh, show off the council. We had that planned for today, but I'll be honest with you, the senior registry program, I think would uh, at this point have more questions and answers. So we're gonna develop that a little bit more and then present at the council at the next meeting on June 3rd. Again, we're excited to detail those programs with council. I think they're gonna benefit the communication with the citizens greatly. Um, upcoming legislation, this is the same, I think, from last meeting. We have bonding of certain city employees, uh, Monroe Meadows TIF legislation round one and our tax budget, which is the first read June 17th. We're gonna vote on that July 1 because it is due to the state of Ohio by July 15th. And that is Ohio, Ohio revised code requirement. Um, additional discussion topics. I don't have any for the group. I did fail to put on here that the city will be closed on Monday due to Memorial Day. So I'd be happy to entertain any questions regarding uh, the city manager report. Do you want to set up a special meeting or work session for uh, possibly the charter review? And I don't know how whether you need any additional time for the uh, disaster plan or whether you just work okay. Oh, I'll have it done. So you want a special work session for the charter review? Yes. Hey, do you have the timeline available? And again, I didn't write it down. We discussed at the last meeting when we're going to put that on, I do believe. I'm going to have Jake reference that. I want to say that we should be okay maybe having that special meeting on Tuesday after Memorial Day. Um, but that's okay with council. And that'll give Emily ample time to do. Is that agreeable with council? Tuesday after Memorial Day? For, for what? 
the board of finish up the charter review. We're, we should focus on the charter review and then maybe do the boards of commission after that and then see if we get to disaster recovery. But the deadline there is definitely for that charter review. Should council want to meet those deadlines to get it onto the board of elections for ballot measure? I'm good with it. What time? Seven? Oh, we got time. Yeah, yeah it was not. Six? Yeah, no problem. I don't know. What's council's pleasure? Fire chief. Six, yeah. We can have it at your place if this is booked, correct? We can have it at your place should we need it. 6.30? You're working 6.30? Tuesday after Memorial Day. 6.30. It should be introduced so, July 15th. Oh, we have time. What's council want to do? Six or six thirty? We're going to enter that July 15th, so we should have we should have some time. Should council should Tuesday not be good for council? Tuesday works for me. Six is fine. Six or six thirty. Six or six thirty. Six thirty. That would work out. Six thirty. Six thirty. Hi. Six thirty on the twenty. So eight two eight hours eight probably. Six thirty, eight thirty. Mr. Barter, you want a motion on that? Uh, so move. Motion. So move. Second. I'll email council as far as the location is here or the fire station. Five twenty eight at six thirty. Yes. Charter review. Try to review and, and finish up also to uh, the boards and commission handbook. Or whatever we and do. Well, we will list it. Yeah. Yeah. The emphasis should be on that charter since we're on the deadline for that. So that's at six thirty p.m. Council. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Councilman Wright. Yes. Councilman Lindsay. Yes. Vice Mayor Eggleston. Yes. Mayor Cook. Yes. Councilman Grimm. Yes. Councilman Vaughn. Yes. Oh, you're Councilman Shannon. Yes. Smart. Seven zero. Mr. Mayor. Go ahead. Uh, Mr. Bridge. Yes, sir. On your uh, Clark County Lead Safe Ohio program, not yours, but the county's. Yes. I read over the information. Does that include like drywall that has lead paint on it? If your house is built before 1978, there's a good possibility it has probably 100 coats on it by now. It definitely says interior paint. So I'm assuming, yes, they would, so, they would have to abate that. I don't know how they abate it. Well, they ripped down the drywall. <laughs> I'm assuming that's what they would do. Oh Lord. Okay. And and one more question on the on the uh, income is that you have to have those incomes are below yes. to be, to qualify. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Thank you, sir. Great questions. Thank you. That's only really could be there, right? Anyone else? Actually, no. We usually All just right. work with drywall or encapsulate it. I guess with that point, we don't have any committee reports that I'm aware of. Mm -hmm. Okay, we go for the comments from members of the public. If you will, please be recognized and go to the podium. Let's set up like this. I'm going to look for a direction. John, have you got anything on that diocese? <laughs> I guess so. I don't know. He's, he John Craybacher, 307 North Henry. I have a question uh, for you, Howie, though. Um, if, if that's okay. Yeah. If that's okay. When is Henry Street get, getting uh, getting fixed? Well, probably that's going into next year. <laughs> See, last year it was this year, and then hey. the year before that, you know, it's getting a little bit bumpy, you know. Yeah. Like holes. And I also want to want to thank the city also for helping out at the garden. You know, they they helped out with you know uh, we borrowed the back, we didn't borrow the backhoe, but we also borrowed one of your guys <coughs> to do ten trees. We had ten trees uh, donated, you know, for from the uh, nursery up here, the Ohio Exchange Nursery, the, and. You know, I can't dig a hole, you know, for 10 trees. However, how he let us borrow one of his people to do that. That was great. That, that helped out a lot for the 10 trees. Okay, the diets. We did, we did have a meeting with Chad Johnson at the um, coffee shop. 
And right now, uh, what stands still is that we gave them our parameters, what we wanted, or we were talked about, and we gave them the price range, which he was a little bit over, you know, but we were willing to work with that, you know. And we're waiting for the plans to come back. Is that probably the estimate? He said he was the estimate right and an estimate. the plans, and he has some really good ideas, you know, some really good ideas. So anyway. We're waiting for that to come back. That's where that is. Um, I know I have heard, I tried to access the website, Randy, and I, for some reason I can't access the website, you know, about the ordinance on the chickens. You know, I just want to, you know, briefly say, you know, it is, you know, it's, it's an important ordinance for our food in our town. You know, people would like to, you know, Part of the garden is to raise um, food in the ground naturally. And now, you know, you know, what we're thinking of is people are also asking about what about the eggs? What about the poultry? You know, other communities have, they've, they've gone into other communities. Huber Heights does have a chicken ordinance. And so I am glad that at least it's coming on, coming to the forefront. Yeah. Um, and the garden is a very much supportive of that. And I think most of our people in the garden, as you can see from behind me, you know, we got the officers, you know, and we're, they're very much behind that. So that's why I, I, I want to say, but you guys are doing a great job. And anyway, that's all I got. Did you need anything, Mr. Cook? Question. Any question? Question. Go ahead. Sure. I think the original question was anything on the diocese, sir? Well, Chad Johnson is, is, is no, that's who we're getting estimates. Yeah, that's who we're waiting for the estimates. Is he drawing the plans up? Please? Is he drawing the plans up? Well, basically, you know, okay. he had an idea. He had an idea of putting metal behind like a metal frame and putting the wood along the metal. And, and one part that we kind of disagree with and we agree with, I agree with, I think a couple others disagreed with, is that he wanted to put plug-ins, you know, for each station, you know, for your computers, you know. So that's kind of iffy on all that. You know, that's one of the things, it's it's a new modern thing, you know. Right. Do, we, you know do we need it? Do we not need it? To see what the price is first. That's what that's how we came back. See what its price is, then we'll bring it to council and we'll just tear it apart. Where we want. All right, thank you, sir. Yeah. Anything else? <clears throat> okay. Thank you, John. <clears throat> Pat Craybacher, 307 North Henry Street, New Carlisle. Um, I want to thank Council for um, hearing me. I think it was the first meeting in April. It was two weeks after the tornadoes that destroyed. Lakeview and uh, Russell's Point and affected seven counties about 40 minutes drive north of here. Um, and I knew after that storm came through that several people in our church mentioned to me that their practice has been when tornadoes get close, because they live in a trailer park north of town, that they would drive into town and go into our church. And that got me thinking about the need. So I did mention it, so I commend you for taking action on that. I think that's a huge need. And it might not just be tornadoes. It could be flooding. It could be other things um, that happen that we can't even kind of imagine. Thank you for taking action on that. I wondered if there's going to be a public hearing on where you're going and what you're looking at. Sure. Go ahead. I think right now, Mrs. Craybacher, that the EMA will be in charge of, under the direction of the fire chief. He will contact them when we have a disaster. Hopefully we never have a disaster like that. I know uh, we have had a tornado in town before. Uh, it hit uh, Trestles, I think it was, uh, the clothing store where CVS was. It hit it. I know it destroyed my trailer. Uh, by RV. So if something like that would happen, the, the fire chief would be involved in that along with the EMA. And 
if the churches are so inclined to open up and let people come in, that would be awesome. Uh, if the churches would do that, most churches will do that unless they've destroyed themselves. Uh, you know, I, every time there's a, a, a warning or anything about tornadoes, severe weather, I get phone calls, not from citizens, but people I know, and they go, where are you going to go if that tornado hits or that storm gets to you? I says, I'm going to sit right here on the couch and watch TV. If it takes my house, it takes my house. It'll take me with it. Right. Because I don't have a basement. And I, I don't have a basement either. And I don't have, no. a, I don't have a, uh, any room that doesn't have a window in it, including the bathroom. It has a skylight. So no, no sense to me going to the bathroom because it can come right through the roof and get me. Yeah, I think the reason that um, a, a hearing may be important for to allow citizens to ask questions and to share experiences that they have. I know when I lived on Richard Court at a ranch home, did not have a basement. So that tornado that came through New Carlisle, when my kids were little, we got in the bathtub in sort of the center of the house. But, um, so, so I just think hearing what people might be concerned about might be important. That's one. Um, the second thing was, um, I'm really looking forward to the pickleball courts. I'm having a little trouble walking, but I'm getting some therapy at Ohio State and things like that are happening, but I want to be on that court. And if you've never played pickleball, I'm telling you, just borrow a ball. We've got rackets if you want to borrow a couple rackets and just try it out. It is the most fun sport. John and I actually competed at the National Senior Games. We were terrible for the most part, but it was it was when it first was added to the National Senior Games, and um, so the competition wasn't real stiff to get qualified, and we got to play uh, compete in pickleball. But pickleball is a hoot; it's a blast. It's much more fun. I was a tennis player at Wright State. It's much more fun than tennis. So just give it a try. I think you'll love it. Good exercise. You'll have fun. Um, the other thing I wanted to ask was the. Charter Review Committee. Um, you know, a group of six or eight of us um, worked pretty hard on that a couple years ago. And um, I didn't know if there was going to be any, I think I heard you say, it's a little hard to hear back here, but I think I heard you say you're setting a meeting. Is that a work session for Tuesday after Memorial Day? 28. So, so my question is, will there be an opportunity or would you want to hear from the members of the Charter Review Committee, especially if you had any questions? We didn't always agree. Kathy was on that. Um, we didn't always agree on everything, but we really worked hard to try to look creatively and to open communication between the citizens of the town on issues that might concern them. So that would be one thought I have, is if you haven't, maybe you'd want to contact the um, members that were on the Charter Review Committee to at least invite them to come. In, in, in my own opinion, uh, we have talked to, his name's escaping me, uh, Mr. Hall. Yeah. He came and gave us a presentation. I think we all did. And I th yeah, I think quite a few of you came. Uh, I, I don't remember who all was on that committee. The, uh, and I think now it's in council's court to look at it and either keep some of it, change some of it, put something else in, or whatever. I think that's the point where we're at right now. Uh, you're more than welcome to come to the meeting. I mean, it's open to the public. <clears throat> but we have to get, council has to get this thing done soon to get it on the ballot. No, I get and that. And I think it's, I forget if it's 60 or 90 days before November, and we have to have it ready into the Board of Elections to, to get it on the ballot. So council needs to move quickly on that. And uh, I, like I said, I think it's in council's court right now. So just to remind you, um, one thing that we did as a charter review group is we um, followed um, sort of the guidelines or the content of the na national, it's, it's mm -hmm. a standard um, type true. format that you can use for updating a charter for a city um, managed government like we have. And that was very helpful. We didn't do take all their suggestions, but I think that was what we were trying to do was to update some of the language on that. And then my last comment is um, about the garden and the chicken ordinance. Um, if you have a chance, I think I said this back in April, to look at the two documentaries that really talk about our food. And this is the concern that people have. We, we talk to them at the farmer's market every summer. And people are concerned about their food and where it's coming from and what can they do to have some kind of security. 
um, we had the third graders over today. This was the second group of third grade classes that came over, and, and we had them at the garden. And the teachers, we said, well, bring your class down anytime you want, because it's within walking distance of the elementary school. It's a great location um, on the old Westlake property. But I think, you know, the issue for um, the uh, people um, in the town, and I think you alluded to it, is um, having some control over their food and what happened in COVID or grocery stores were empty. Um, but if you could um, have a, uh, a good open-minded discussion on that, look at the documentary, Kiss the Ground, which came out in February of 2020, right when COVID was starting. <coughs> and that's more about the science of good soil and climate change. The second documentary just came out in March this year, 2024. It's called Common Ground. And it is really a documentary that's quite um, enlightening on regenerative agriculture. That is the future of agriculture. And so what John and I do at the garden in our small way is we're trying to do things regeneratively. Chickens would help that out. I'm not saying we're gonna get into chickens big time out there, but we are familiar with chicken trucks that you can have in your backyard if you want to have a nice uh, habitat for your chickens. Um, we're gonna be taking an online course that Ohio State just put out, it's online, but I kind of think that every person that's gonna have chickens in their yard should take this OSU, it's like a, an online course, and it trains you on how to care for chickens. So I think that course kind of should be a requirement. That's my own thought about it. Um, thank you for considering that, um, that language next week or two weeks from now. I think it's really important. Thanks. We are a food desert after all. Go ahead. Mrs. Kerbacher, the policy question you ask about the public hearing, so that charter review, the boards of commission handbook, any of that, especially the um, it's items you're discussing, that's going to be an being policy. So council is going to have to vote on that. So there'd be a legislative cycle just as we have now. There'd be an introduction. Well, actually, it might just be a resolution. So we'll have a public hearing before it gets voted on because it is policy by council. Okay. Yep. I wanted to let you know too that we are working on an emergency disaster plan for the city. Say that again. We're working on an emergency disaster plan for the city. Right. Which will be led by fire chief and EMA. Right, and I think that's really important. Thank you for doing that. And but I, I do think it's important to hear from citizens on those kinds of topics because you know our limited experience of my own self and and, and maybe individuals on the fire department, but well, you may not have thought of the emergency that somebody else has got lived through and that may be worthwhile hearing. Thanks. Thank you, Pat. One thing that I didn't bring up, I believe Kathy had made mention to me that sometime back under previous city management that we did have a disaster plan. And to the best of my knowledge, we've not come up with that plan. Go ahead. That was me. We have an administrative continuous vigilation plan out for an emergency disaster. So let's just say a tornado comes through and wipes the city down. We have a plan in place for the administration to continue, i.e. the finances go on, the bills keep on getting paid, the operational side of things continue on. What you're working on is more of a response after the fact. But we have a, a, a continuation plan that's going to actually be um, included into that final disaster plan we do. So it's going to be multiple plans and one that center around that disaster, if that makes sense. But we have a continuation plan. So I want people to think that if something comes down, the city has to shut down. That is not the case. No, that, yeah. Yeah. that's not the case. This, this disaster plan we're working on has the, I don't want to say it, tornadoes, uh, possibly heat problems, mm -hmm. electric oh, problems, the kind of things that the city has already backed itself up with the computers, the software, and the necessary legislation that we can go on. But I think that in doing this, we want to go ahead and do this a little steps at a time so that we are comfortable <coughs> when we're done with this plan that we've got all of our T's crossed, our I's dotted. And with the help of the EMA and the chief at that work session, I think we all were enlightened to some degree about what we have at our disposal already. 
Other than that, can I piggyback off one more thing, sir? If you don't mind? If council, if you look at that mitigation form, there's a cost associated with it. So just please be mindful of that. And then when we come back in administration to say, hey, we think this is going to cost this much, there is a, there is a cost aspect to this. It's not a, a free thing. So that when we sideline it, we come back and say, hey, you know, we may be obligated for $26,000, and that's just a random number I just thought up. But there is going to be a cost associated with it. If you remember correctly, Michelle said it cost Springfield X amount of dollars to be included into theirs, too. So um, as we work through this as a community, we can decide what's that dollar amount threshold that council's comfortable with. Hello, my name is Carrie Ann Grow. I live at 321 South Scott Street here in New Carlisle. I'm an advocate for mothers and children as I am a doula and own my own business here in town. And as an advocate, um, I'm going to bring up the chickens because scientifically speaking, I would like to bring forth some scientific evidence to you as to why they would be great for our community. Besides the fact that we know that all of the major cities here in Ohio actually do allow them, including Cleveland and the city of Dayton. As mentioned prior, Huber Heights also allows chickens. Now, there was a town in Europe that did not allow chickens at one point in time, and they decided to give it a go. It improved their environment, it improved the children's health, and it improved community which I think are all three excellent reasons to allow chickens, not roosters. <laughs> Let's be reasonable here <laughs> to, into our community with obvious restrictions that are beneficial for all. As a taxpaying citizen here who owns her own business and advocates for these, these minorities, these children, you know, it has been proven scientifically in studies from Cambridge and through the National Institutes of Health with 72 articles that chickens are beneficial for children's health. And our community, we know a lot of people here are living in poverty. We know that our children are not necessarily getting the nutrition they need. Homegrown chickens, eggs <laughs> here that are produced in your own backyard have more minerals and nutritional value than what you can buy in the store. Children's health has improved across the board in communities who have allowed chickens. That is just one excellent benefit of allowing chickens here in our community. I would just like you to consider the scientific evidence past our feelings of, well, they may smell. Well, there are restrictions for that, like, you know. But I smell, I smell turkey manure on the fields every spring, and that is not fun. Yet I put up with it. <laughs> right there, yeah. If anybody has any questions, or if you would like me to email you the scientific data, my email is k-a-r-r-i-a-n-e at gmail.com. Can you do that one more time? Yes, k-a-r-r-i-a-n-e at gmail.com. I think it is important to consider the scientific standpoint of what we are considering to say yes or no to. And that is what I tell my clients in the hospitals who are being told that their babies are too big to birth, which has been pr disproven <laughs> decades ago. So thank you very much for your time. Thank and last you, again, Grow, G R O W. Okay. Very well. <coughs> Anyone else? Secretary. <laughs> Janelle Zimmerman, 219 Prentice Drive. Um, I would just like to bring up, I think Mr. Cook hit the nail on the head last meeting. What we really need is something so we can hear. When that air conditioner comes on, you can't hear anything you're saying. And you can't hear anybody that's sitting here facing that direction, except Mr. Kitko. Now, if you could get all your comments to him and he could read them, <laughs> that would work. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, I did they talk once about getting everybody a microphone and I can't remember if we it actually, would interfere with the recording or if it was expensive I can't remember what we're going to get a directional speaker for the next meeting it'll be shooting volume back that way for you we were just discussing it 
So but do you think it's going to work when that air conditioner's on? I don't know what else we can do until council makes a final decision how they want the dais to set out. You, you guys can't get individual microphones? Or again, we're not going to make a big thing until they have the final say out with how they're, they're, they're going to be laid out. But we can get a speaker to shoot some volume in the back, yes. That's, that's an easy fix. And is there a reason you can't get microphones? We're going to get them. We're just waiting for them to final design their dais is how they want to be set, set out. Oh, so everyone will have a microphone. I thought you meant you were just going to make it go this way. You're going down two rows here. I said we're going to get a microphone. I mean, the speaker for the next meeting, see how that goes. We're looking into the microphones, but we're waiting on them to get done with their final dais layout. This has been ongoing okay, now for so quite some time. Okay, so you are looking into that. Yeah, we've been looking at it for a minute. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, if you go online, we can hear what you're saying because it picks that up off of here, I guess. Mm -hmm. But if you come to a meeting, except for Mr. Kitko, you really can't hear anybody. Well, we can talk louder. So, well, that would be great. Yeah. And a little slower, too. Oh, well, you're asking a lot. I'm, I was raised by a lady from the East Coast. I just talk real fast, but I'll, I'll, I'll slow yeah. down for you a little bit. <laughs> okay. Thank you. That's all I can remember I wanted yeah. to say. I'm sure there was something sure. else. But Thank you, Jim. Thank you. Anyone else? If not, we'll go to uh, resolutions and ordinances, I guess. Resolution? We have none tonight. We have Ordinance 20, 24-21, introduced on May 6, 2024. Public hearing in action tonight. An ordinance amending Chapter 1066 of the Codified Ordinances of the City of New Carlisle, Ohio, to revise cemetery fees. So I'm sorry. So I have Vice Mayor. Second is Mr. Shammy. So this this is the one that I emailed you guys on about amending before you vote on it. So. You guys can need a reference to that email. Um, Send it out with the packets. So we have some amendments we need to do this, with this one. Let me pull up my email. So also kindly ask City Council amend Ordinance 2024-21 cemetery rates, namely Exhibit B. See that reads Section M grades and after will have an added price of 150 for each grave to cover the cost of the foundation. C should read as follows. Section M grades and after will have an added price of strike out 150, put 200 for each grade the cost of the foundation. And then we put a diagram down there what it was going to look like. So what we have determined is for an explanation of this, should anyone be confused? The original, we had done a prior ordinance the last time we raised the rates and the codification company had missed codifying uh, the increase of the $200. So right now on code, it says 150. But in reality, it was changed to 175 a couple years ago. So really, that increase is only going from 175 to 200. We uh, section N was never added into that. So we have two sections in our cemetery: section M and section M that already have foundations in them. So which is why they have to pay the 200 dollars and get reimbursed for us to reimburse that. So that's amendments would need to be made. And once we make those amendments, then it has to sit, and we can vote on it at the next meeting. So I don't know how that works with a motion on the floor. Why don't you just withdraw it? Yeah. Does, does that explanation suffice, Council? Yes. Since there's a motion on the floor and a second, the second needs to be rescinded, and then the motion needs to be rescinded. <coughs> no. And now they can make Sir? Mm -hmm. Correct. They made a motion to accept it. You have to make a motion to amend it. So I make the motion to amend to reflect the changes that was discussed at the end of this. Second. I'll, I'll second that. Okay. Would you like me to restate for the record? We got it. You got it. Yeah. Well, unless Emily needs it. I do have a question on these. Uh, I might have been looking at the wrong ones. I understand we need to, you know, kind of keep up with the Joneses and cost and everything does go up. 
I had a hard time wrapping my mind around the infant, infant grave section. If it's a newborn, and they're more than likely they're going to be young parents, they're going to be stressed enough without having to come up with money to bury their child with. Uh, you know, 150 bucks may not be a lot to to anybody in this room, but if you're just starting out, 150 bucks could be a lot. And for non-residents, they're wanting to raise that to 200. I would like to see that lowered myself, uh, if it could be. The uh, I think 150 for residents, I think it's a little high. And for non-residents, I think 200 is a little high. Uh, I would propose on the residents to make it $100, and for non-residents to make it, uh, leave it at 150. I don't know the stats on how many infants we have that comes from the city or from outside the city that wants to be buried in our cemetery. Uh, maybe the city manager or Mr. Kitko would have some stats on that. Uh, slim, not, it doesn't happen very often. It doesn't, <laughs> well, I would hope it doesn't happen. The worst thing you could do is have a child and it dies within a week or two. Yep. Fortunately, I've never experienced that and I'm too old now to ever experience it. So, uh, but I would like to see that, that change done. I don't know if we can do it tonight. Yeah, do it with the amendment now. We can put it in mm -hmm. the amendment. So, we'll do it now. So I would like to, to amend the amendment to include the infant grave, infant section from 150, reduce that to 100, and the non-resident leave it at 150 instead of raising it to 200. Any comments in regard to this? Go ahead. Uh, it wouldn't, I don't think it'd be a, really a burden on the city because as the city manager said, it doesn't happen that often. So if we only have, God forbid, one or two a year, I think the city can handle that. <laughs> but I'll defer to the city manager. I think that'd be a nice thing to do for your residents, but not for your non-residents, because anyone who has unfortunately lost a child would come in here to bury it for free or somewhat discounted. So right. I, I wouldn't have an issue waiving it or making it, I, Maybe like a something very very small, so there's something there in place, um, but leave it relatively unchanged for your non-residents, so we don't have an influx of people coming in. Well, I, I think what I said was to drop the residents to one to hundred and leave the non-residents at one fifty. I believe is what I said. For me. Make it zero. Yes. For non-residents? No, for non-residents or residents? For residents. Okay. And they keep non-residents. Can it be a minimal? Well, we, can it, can we think, negotiate a minimal charge on the resident just in case we need to have something in there because it is a cemetery? It is a I, I, right. enterprise think, fund. Well, if, if I may, I think we have to have something there because we have to cover the cost of the city workers opening up this grave or whatever whatever they have whatever part the city workers has or the cemetery workers have involved in this we have to cover the expense of their their time so i would even be good with dropping it down to probably fifty dollars for residents these are for lots of and leave it at, at the uh, 150 for non-residents you can't just give away a lot. Uh, unless you want to, unless council wants to do something for non-residents. Again, if they don't live here, they're not paying taxes, they're not helping support things. So I don't have a problem charging a non-resident uh, the $150. Heaven forbid they're out here on vacation visiting family in the city and their child dies. Dollar and then whatever you know. Because uh, it's really a small portion. Yeah, yeah. 
So, do I need to restate the? Well, no. It, first of all, what's council's pleasure? It, or, is council good with fifty dollars for residents? If they're not, then you know we need. I need to know that why I restate this this or this uh, amendment. So is council good with 50 and 150? I thought we were uh, uh, increasing it to 200. That's the no, I, I want to drop it. I want to keep it at 150 for non-residents. And I want just to- for, Just for infants. Just for infants, yes. And for residents, drop it down to 50 bucks. That will cover the expense of the city worker or cemetery worker doing whatever they're involved, whatever their involvement would be. Should be just infant or not over because regular section. Do you guys want this in just the infant section because you can have your yeah. infants more, oh, so it's just an infant Just section. infants. And there is a fee associated with this because now we think about it, we cannot give away the land for free because it has to be like a dollar. Governments can't give away land. So is that is that the grave site cost? Is what yes, it's for the lot, sir. Okay, it's for the it's lot. For the lot. So again, you know, I'm back to probably 100 bucks and 150. <laughs> Can we do that? And we're still we're still buying the. I hate this arrangement, and I know it's off topic, but this arrangement, quite honestly, is not good. I cannot see the city manager. I cannot see the administration, and and as oh, the right. citizens done said, I can't even hear what they're saying at the time. So hopefully, whoever come up with this design changes it i don't know who did it but it needs to go back the way it was okay enough of that rant so back to this uh we can do 100 and 150 i believe correct whatever you guys do as long as there's a fee associated with that we're good it's going to have no impact on the bottom line okay so don't worry about the bottom line let's go with the 50 dollars for residents and 150 for non-residents if council's good with that that's the amendment in addition to the amendment of, of the of the other stuff that we're not changing this which is up above for interments and stuff Monday through Friday all those yeah I think they're a little high but apparently we have been behind the times and not been keeping up with it so that's the only amendment to the amendment I want to make if council's good with it so I'd like to keep the non-resident at 200 our funeral, our funeral, our uh, cemetery is only so large, and I would like to keep our citizens' children there, close by to them, and not bring in people from Heber Heights to place their kids there. I don't. That sounds rude, but I don't know. I'd like to leave that high so that we don't encourage people from out of town to come here and use our spaces. But I love the 50 for the infants for children here. Okay, let's. The pleasure here. Go ahead, Meg. I agree with Kathy. We'll do the 50 and leave the non resident 200. Any other comment? Go ahead, Meg. Yes. Is this still the fee for the foundation? This no, is the no. fee for the lot for them to buy the burial lot. It's under section C. The prices of lots are as follows. So this has nothing to do with the previous amendments, sir. Those were under uh, exhibit B. Okay, so the. This section is under exhibit A if you're having a hard time finding it on the legislation, sir. Would you like my paper copy so you can see it, sir? Nope. Okay. I found it. So your amendment is to change? Well, my amendment is to change for residents for infants in the infant section from 150 to $50. For I would lot. still... That's for the lot, yes, sir. I would still like to have even non-residents at 150. And the reason I say that, to keep it at 150, say we have residents here that has moved out of town, and they come back here, they're here all the time, visiting, agreed, they're not paying taxes, 
they're visiting people here and they bring a newborn with them and God forbid the newborn dies of Sid the first night they're here. And they think, this is our hometown. I want to bury my child in New Carlisle Cemetery. Maybe down the road, their plans are to move back here at some point when, when they're done retiring or when they retire or whatever. So that's why I would like to leave it at 150. But if council's pleasure is to move it, leave it, uh, you know, at the rate, the increased rate of 200, I'll be good with that too. But because it involves an infant, the the new parents or the young parents are stressed enough, regardless if they're residents or non-residents. Maybe they they have this tremendous loss. And the last thing they need to do is try to come up with money to bury their, to buy a plot to bury the child in. If I may ask Emily, the subject of the First Amendment was? The $200 fee. Uh, it's, the amendment was to, you got it, let me take it. You say it again. It was to add Section N to Section M because the foundations are already existent and then to take that from up to $200. Okay. I'll go with $200 for not that. I didn't hear you, Dale. I would go with $200 for non-residents. On infants? On infants. Okay. When, then, okay, I, do you need me to restate the motion, Mrs. Byron? Oh. Okay. The, the motion, and this is only for infants. It doesn't involve anything else. Let me go back to it so I can see it. On infants, for residents, the fee will go from $150 to $50 per lot. The non-residents will be raised from $150 to $200 per lot. That is the motion. Does that include the first motion too? I mean the first amendment? I hope so. Yes, yeah, so it was the second. Okay. I seconded the first one, then I amended it. So I'll clean you actually up. have two motions on the floor right now. I'll clean it up tonight and send it out to you guys when I get home so we can, you guys can see the final one. It's a motion and two amendments, right? Yes. 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 All right. So we're voting. We have a motion to accept all the other stuff, and then we have an amendment to accept the infant from 150 to 50 and 150 to 200. So. Okay, so I had a first from Lindsay and a second from Grim, just on adding section N and increasing the fee to yeah. $200. So we need to vote first. on that first. Let's do that first. I think you need to do the amendment first. That's the amendment. Okay. Okay, and drop. We're not the voting fee, on the ordinance because and, and, and drop the fee down to fifty, correct? No. For regular, for infants. That was the second amendment. That was the second. That's what you. Okay, okay, for. okay, okay, okay. I'm I'm on the track now. We're, we're talking. Let's about vote for other. that first. The adding n and the fee changing to two hundred dollars. The first was Lindsay. The second was Grim. Correct at the very beginning. Yes. Okay. Let's vote for that. And then I heard you with the first, and you with the second on your additional stuff. Right. Okay. okay. So okay. voting on the first one. Well, if Grim was the script. second. Ball, Councilman Bond. Yes. Councilman Shammy. Yes. Councilwoman Wright. Yes. Councilman Lindsay. Yes. Vice Mayor Eggleston. Yes. Mayor Cook. Yes. Councilman Grim. I think All right. we're making this a little more complex than it needs to be, but yes. Okay. Uh, so, 7-0 um, for on the amendments. First amendments. The second amendments are changing... Infant graves. Infant graves infant from section. 150 to $50 for residents and 150 to 200 for non-residents. Correct. And the first was Lindsay. The second was Shammy, I think. Or... Uh, Councilwoman Wright. Yes. Councilman Lindsay. Yes. Vice Mayor Eggleston. Yes. Mayor Cook. Yes. Councilman Grimm. Yes. Councilman Bond. Yes. Councilman Shammy. Yes. 
That amendment is accepted 7-0. All right, and then that goes back to you and comes back. Yes, so later. it'll be yeah, uh, on the agenda next week for a vote. Okay, <laughs> moving on to ordinance 2024-22 introduction tonight public hearing in action on june 3rd so this is read only an ordinance amending section 1460.44 of the codified ordinances of the city of new carlisle regarding accessory uses for recreational vehicles and equipment and overnight parking we have ordinance 2024-23e introduction public hearing in action tonight an ordinance authorizing the city manager or the director of public service assistant city manager to enter into an agreement with the board of clark county commissioners for the 2024 roadway resurfacing project and declaring an emergency so moved well, an explanation of this ordinance i will turn it over to mr kiko since this is his project Thank you, Mr. Bridge. Um, as you're aware, we went in with the Clark County Engineer's Office for a countywide resurfacing. Our portion of the project bid came in at $176,169.88. But um, in case we want to go do the, more, the additional work we want to do and um, if for any incidentals, uh, this would allow me to spend up to $305,000 uh, if we end up getting more work. Um, uh, above that 176,000. Question. Go ahead. Mr. Kirko, repeat the 300,000 comment again. So basically that's my max cuz the original bid was out was like 200 and, or 300 and I take it back. It was about 300,000. So when the bids come back half, we are putting some more work back in because the bids come in so cheap. Okay, so you're adding work to it. I'm adding more work to it. Could go up to 300,000. Yes. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. And call it? Call it. Councilwoman Wright? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Vice Mayor Eggleston? Yes. yes. Mayor Cook? Councilman Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Shammy? Yes. That's a 7 0. Ordinance 2024-25, introduction tonight, public hearing in action on June 3rd. An ordinance amending section 618.15 of the codified ordinances of the city of New Carlisle regarding animal enclosures. Ordinance 2024-26, introduction tonight, public hearing in action on June 3rd. An ordinance amending chapter 618 of the codified yeah, ordinances for the purpose of permitting the keeping of chickens at residential properties within city limits. And moving on to other business. You want me to read it? Do we have any other um, business? There's nothing other than Don't discussion know. on city related business. I got one question. Regarding the cemetery, at one point we had discussed a cremation section. Where does that stand? Never got final guidance from council on that. So if you guys want us to look at that, council can direct us to do that. Um, I think that, how many years ago was that? I, I saw it three years ago. About three three years ago. A, a, a column I thought we got some column bids. Yeah. Or pricing. Uh, you're talking about the uh, mausoleum. mausoleum. You're talking about the mausoleum. Can we have a mausoleum for the quote for the uh, the top and all that? I have to go back and look and refresh on. Uh, yeah. We we if I may, we but, got bids on a mausoleum. A mausoleum, or how do you pronounce it? No, no. And that's what the uh, they got the bids on. No. The the uh, the interment of ashes or germs is you just dig a hole and it's various the smaller I understand that, but we had information from I believe Cincinnati. that was like where they had a I guess the word is a like a pillar. 
He, and they had drawers. It was five years, more than five years ago, because Emily doesn't remember, but it was. Now that me and Howard kind of talk about it under our breath. It was like a wall there with the stuff to go in, and then the, I think a pillar type thing. But that was a long, long time ago. We'll go through our records and see what we got. Um, but if this council wants us to look at that again, just kind of... I think we definitely should, because I think that's becoming more and more of an option. Oh, it is. It's very much so. Yeah. Yeah. I think people still do the traditional burial, but I think people are getting cremated more so than ever before. I've seen some of the... Experience I'm sorry. I've seen some of the most beautiful crematorium, and they're just like in an area about half the size of this room mm -hmm. with flowers and rose bushes and little trees but they're actually a tube like done with a post hole digger and then they get a plaque on the top that just sits and covers that and that would be extremely much cheaper than a mausoleum or the drawer thing that slides in and out that would well, this, be this would tie in a lot with the right state they have a garden very similar to this where ashes are interred and at that point uh, I think that one is almost full but go ahead no I, um, what I was, was going to say um, you threw me off the right state comment because I went there and I'm thinking where's that at on campus um, so circle back to me. sorry oh I know what it was now sorry uh, the reason why we looked at our cemetery rates this year and kind of increased them more so than ever in years past is because if you remember correctly at the last meeting we had said we're going to intro that cemetery rate ordinance and they're going to be a little bit higher than what we normally used to because we need to start doing some capital improvement projects back there whether that be paving your roads or building this crematorium type thing you're, you're talking about. So um, kind of perfect timing now that we're looking at our cemetery rates and seeing how that can impact future projects. Um, but yeah, we'll revisit that and we'll definitely email it back out to council. I think it's, a, I think you're right. I think it's something now, and now that the city's doing better in the general fund and we're carrying over the, the funds we have, it's something that we can definitely look at. Anyone have anything else before we ask for a motion to adjourn? Go ahead. Motion to adjourn. Got a motion to adjourn? I have a question. Go ahead. <laughs> it's got a motion. Let's draw one. I read a little bit about it earlier. I don't know who come up with this design for council. I strongly suggest whoever did it rethink it and put it back the way it was. Yes, sir. Uh, the last meeting we had asked if this is how we want you guys wanted to proceed, and that was a resounding yes. So if it's not working for like a regular meeting, this could be like a work session set up yeah, maybe? It's, it's not working for a regular meeting in my opinion. Well, that's a discussion for you guys. So I'll just let you know the history of, of that. One of the reasons that this was done so that we can hear a little bit better and now we've got a problem with the audience not being able to hear. We either need to step up and address the problem of this building not being sound quality. <laughs> or we're going to flounder for the years. Go ahead. Well, we're going to we're going to move this over here next time. Just trial and error. See how it goes. That way, we're it's not going to alleviate this. And I'm with you on that. That's weird. But hopefully, it'll at least alleviate. If someone's at the podium speaking, then the people in the back would be able to hear. Janelle, can you hear me better now? A little bit. Well, that's going to be moved. It, sure. And if that we move that over there to that side, that may help out. Sure. I don't know. She'll be able to hear what you're Sure. The air conditioner's off right now. Oh, it's on. So it's not blowing. I just, the fan might be on. I think it's imperative that council can see their administration. And Mrs. Wright and I cannot. She can, but I can't see. I can't hear when Randy's talking, especially if he's looking that way. I have so a so we I need have, I have a solution. We need to move it back the way no, it was. We need to move into Heritage Hall. Well we have better acoustics. That's why I thought they built that. Because so you know this we can is try it out. Wanna do the next meeting there? Try that out? Is it paved yet? 
That'll be that's, paid, uh, Thursday. That's Thursday. We either fix this on? building or we move. Well, I don't mind right. moving it, but the seating day. arrangement needs to be changed. Okay, back. we can we can change that over there because this is Actually, it's getting paid this Thursday. I can't say what I want to say because I'm in public, but I'll tell you after the meeting exactly what I think about it, and anybody else that wants to hear it. Everybody can see our administration, but me and Kathy, unless Kathy's looking that way. And everybody can hear our administration, but me, I don't know if Kathy can hear or not. You don't think that some of the rest of us sit here and can't hear? Well, you don't want me to answer that. Please go ahead. Oh, okay. Put your hearing aids in so you can hear. Okay. Or wear them things, whatever those things are. I don't know what that is. It's in there. This room is not well i think American. you both are agreeing on that point that this isn't a great i don't have a problem hearing anybody in this room and i can talk loud enough for anybody including mrs uh zimmerman or zimmer sorry janelle i forgot your last name she can hear me can you not hear me right now so i can speak loud enough in this room for people to hear go ahead Ken. I'd really like to try out the other building next time. We'll, we'll move it. Not a big deal. We'll yeah, try. Can you make it happen? Absolutely. Sounds like a plan. Motion to adjourn. Thank you. Still move. Got a vote on it still. Yeah, we do. Oh, did. yes, we do. <laughs> now, Chris. Chris. Councilwoman Wright. Oh, sorry. Yes. Councilman Lindsay. Yes. Vice Mayor Eggleston. Yes. Mayor Cook. Yes. Councilman Grimm. Yes. Councilman Vaughn. Yes. Councilman Chief. Yes. 